a sewing machine will work when it's properly threaded and the bobbin is wound correctly. The Foff Ambition 620 has simple, easy guides and paths to follow that are completely marked. I'm going to go through some highlights and completely thread this machine for you. Now this machine just came out of the box and I was noticing that the presser foot is down. First rule of thumb, always thread with the presser foot up. So I'm going to just go in and reach in and lift that foot up. There's also a bobbin that comes empty in the bobbin area. So if you want to get a hold of that bobbin and pull it out. Let's talk about thread. Quality of thread will make a difference when you sew. I mean, it makes up 50% of your seam if you think about it. So don't be using grandma's old thread. If it, this is a high performance sewing machine, you need to feed it good fuel. So if you're having trouble with the machine, make, maybe change your thread quality. Uh, the more you spend for thread, the better it actually is. So don't cheap out, you, you already invested for this machine, trust me. Okay, next, if your thread has little X's on it, like this is considered cross wound thread, it is going to feed best when placed on the horizontal spool pin, all right? So it actually is going to come off the spool like this. Now, when it does come off, you need to put a spool cap on that spool. And in the machine comes two sizes, a bigger one like this, and also a smaller one. So if you are using a more narrower spool, put it on there. Now I mentioned the cross wound thread. Now not all thread is cross wound. Some is actually a stacked thread. So if you look at your spool and you notice it's just stepping right on up the spool, it actually will do best on a vertical spool pin. And then it actually will then sit here and spin off the back of the spool. So keep that in mind when you're choosing what you want. Now you can also put a little felt pad there and that's a little quieter as that goes. Okay, so once you identified your exact brand of thread and if you should put it on the vertical one or the horizontal one, we're gonna wind a bobbin first. Make sure my spool cap's all the way on, so no gap. So next, we're gonna, every time you thread the machine or wind a bobbin, you'll be using the first guide. You'll notice there's a little dotted indention, indented part of the picture and a little arrow showing you you're going underneath. For threading the machine, we'll be traveling this way and down, but winding a bobbin, we're gonna follow the arrows pointing towards the back. So at this point, we're gonna come around this back little finger and towards the front of the machine. Now this is the important part. When you come underneath this little button, you need to kind of hold it so the thread can actually click in. Do you secure it? This is a pretensioner. If you've ever wound a bobbin and it kind of turned out fluffy, it wasn't really tight on the bobbin itself, it's because it wasn't in and underneath this little kind of spring loaded button. So make sure you get it in there. It should be a little bit tighter to pull on it when you pull. Next, bobbins. You, this is not a place to mix and match bobbins. <laughs> this bobbin is for this machine. This is a class 15 plastic bobbin. So if you're looking for additional bobbins, make sure that you're getting those. Your FOP retailer will have these bobbins for you. In one of, the, in the, one of those holes, and I say one of them because not all of them are actual holes, there's a little opening. You're gonna thread the thread through the bobbin from the inside out. And then you're gonna take your bobbin, push down on the bobbin winder till it clicks. I'm holding the thread straight up above it push the bobbin to the right side, and the screen actually says bobbin winding on. Step on your foot control, hold the thread up, don't let go, and as you wind it, eventually you're gonna be able to um, break it off. Now I just adjusted the speed, so if this is really low, it's not winding very fast, so go ahead and crank that up. This bro just broke off, but look, it left a little bit of tail. This, you, you wanna make sure to always trim off. You can trim it off during or after, but whatever you do, don't leave a little tail sticking out your bobbin. It's gonna interrupt when we get it down to this area. So when it gets full, it is gonna stop spinning. At that point, you'll take your foot off the foot control. See how it's starting to slow down? That's full enough. Slide the bobbin to the left, lift up, and there's a cutter on the back side right here. So if you just take the thread around the cutter and lift. Now, 
I'm going to show you a little trick. I have just lifted it up off the bobbin spindle. This is exactly the same air way it needs to go into the bobbin. So if you lift it off and come straight down here, the thread is going to drop into the bobbin area. You notice the bobbin is spinning counterclockwise. That is the correct way this bobbin needs to be. If it's flipped over, it doesn't work as well. You do notice there's a little groove here. Take the thread, bring it down the little groove. It's right about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And as you come down, if you even want to put your finger on the bobbin and give it a little pull, it clicks into place. Now you don't see it because it's underneath where this little gray piece in the arrow is, but continue to follow the path all the way around because this little arrow is right next to a thread cutter. So when you pull, it breaks the thread off. It leaves it the perfect length. You put the door on and forget about it. Then when we finish threading the machine, we are going to be able to just start to sew. We don't have to bring that bobbin thread up. So this bobbin is done. Coming back to the top, we will be undoing the thread from that little pre-tensioner and now utilizing the first guide that we used to wind the bobbin, we'll now follow the path to the side. Now remember, presser foot is up at this time and you're gonna follow the arrow straight down. You're gonna come underneath and then come back up. Now here's a little trick. Right about here, when you've come down this path, change direction, come up the next one, I want you to take your thread and with your hands, give it a little flossing motion. That makes sure that it seats completely in the tension discs right here. When the foot goes down, those discs are gonna squeeze onto that thread, allowing the machine to do the stitch. Without the thread in those discs, that's when you have those big hairy loops underneath your fabric and it gets all nested in, down in the throat plate, it's not fun. All right, you're gonna take your thread, come in on the right side, all the way back, and down on the left. You have just hooked it into the little take-up lever. Make sure the needle is at the highest position when you do this. You can touch the needle up down button. That's the easiest, because then it puts it in the exact place for that thread to easily be threaded into the take-up lever. We're almost done. There's one more guide at the top of the needle. If you'll take your thread with your right hand behind the little groove that's right by the needle screw, and then we can use the needle threader to thread the needle. So I, at this time, I can lower that presser foot down. Gives me a little bit more room. The needle threader is going to come down and swivel its head around the needle. If you catch the needle threader on its way down with the thread under the arm, Bring it all the way down, swivel it all the way around the needle. Bring the thread to the right. You're gonna come in those little arms and lift up and then gently twist the needle threader head away from you and let go of that thread. It's gonna produce a little loop on the back that you pull right through. Lift up the presser foot, slide the thread down the middle of the foot. And remember, we don't have to do anything with that bobbin. But we're going to take our fabric, we're putting two layers together. I just took a piece of fabric and folded it in half. Put it underneath the presser foot, lower the foot onto the fabric, and go ahead and sew. If it sounds good, you have done it correctly. You can finish by touching the thread snips or scissor button as I sometimes call it. It cuts the thread, you lift up the foot and you pull it out. And you should see the same stitching on the front as you do on the back. That is when you know you have correctly threaded the top and the bobbin in the machine.